We want to set up a variable table or status chart in step seven. So first we need to start our somatic manager by going to start and clicking the somatic manager. When that comes up, we'll need to open a project. So we can go file, open. And then out of our list of projects, we can scroll down and find the one we want to work with. Say OK. Then we'll use our star or asterisk key on the numeric pad to expand all the levels of the blocks folders over there. And click blocks, details, see our information come up. Now before we can use a variable table, we have to create one. We can do that by right clicking on the blocks folder. Go to insert new object and then click variable table. Say OK. And while we're here, let's go ahead and give that a symbolic name so we'll have a, a name on it we can use. If we click on program and then double click symbols, it'll open our symbol table. You can go down at the bottom and type address as VAT1 for variable table 1 and give it a name test table. Click off that line and save it. So now they're available for use back in the program. We can close our symbol editor. We're through with that. Go back to our blocks folder. You see we don't have the name yet, but if we hit the F5, the function key on the keyboard, F5, it's a Windows shortcut that refreshes the screen. And there's our symbol table now, test table for variable table 1. If we double click variable table one, we'll open that up. And you see there are no entries in that table. We've got two or three ways we can put values in there. Let's go first and do the way that's easiest if we have several in a sequence to do. We want to insert a range of variables. And we'll start with input 0.0. .0 and we want to go eight points. And we can use our little arrow buttons to roll up or down the number and check our binary format. It'll be fine. Click OK. And when we do that, that puts eight sequential points in there, starting with I00 to I0.7, and gives us our symbol names and our monitor format for everything. If we just click on Enter down here, that'll give us a blank space. Now we can start putting in an output, Q0.0, and hit enter, puts in the symbol name. If we'd rather go by symbol instead of hard code address, we can come over here and type second output, which is our symbolic name for Q0.1. When we enter that, it fills in the rest of the information for us. So now we've got a chart set up. We need to connect because we can't use our monitoring eyeglasses yet. They're grayed out, so we have to connect using this button that shows connecting the PC across the MPI network to the PLC. So if we click that button on the toolbar, we now connect up. We see online show up in the title bar, and it changes to light blue, and we see our eyeglasses are now enabled. If we use the eyeglasses over here that just have a one by them, we get a one-shot view of the monitor values. Because it's a one, it just reads it once. We can flip the switches, which I'm doing now on the inputs, so and we don't see them change. Then if we go to our eyeglasses over by the clock, that's a cyclic read, so it continuously updates. And as I flip the switches, we see the inputs and the outputs are changing. Also, we can go down and use the operator interface still to toggle some M bits and change the outputs without having any of the input change show up on the screen. And now we're back flipping switches. We'll just turn on all the inputs and then flip them back off in sequence. Okay, now we can turn off our monitoring with the glasses, toggle that button back off. If we go close our variable table, step seven is going to remind us that we've added some things here. Do we want to save that? Yes, we do. And then we'll drop back to Somatic Manager. Now, if we want to use that table again, since we saved it, we can just double click on Variable Table 1. We've set up a, a range of I.O. points we want to look at over and over. 
Now it comes back already configured. We just hit our button that says connect to the configured CPU, hit our monitoring eyeglasses, and now we're back in business. We can see the inputs change for us. And we'll close at that time. We don't get prompted about saving because we did not make any changes, so we can close our project and then close step seven.